Happy weekend. This is the weekend wrap. I hope everybody's having a good one so far. We had an interesting week in the fact that some of the currency pairs did appear to be getting ready to, if not at the verge of making reversals of this slow, choppy range bound or slow time consuming grind higher, which is difficult at best to um, to lock in profits in because you get chopped up and targets your uh, stops get hit. Uh, and a lot of a lot of break even trades in this kind of at this kind of trade or small losses it's difficult to find momentum in one way or the other but that could be changing right here right now and let's take a look at what we're looking at first off let's take the euro USD as we all know if you've been paying attention at least what I've been saying they have this descending trend line that is coming down all the way from 2008 this uh, this has capped the price action the pair came peaked its head up above it and has since reversed and we can see that the pair had also did reverse right at the top of this uh, I guess you can say it's a channel or a wedge of some sort and, and reversed right away now what I've been saying and implying is that if the pair can get back below this 138.30 level because that was our resistance zone then we could see the cross move back down and test the bottom of the range and what I'm going to be favoring heading into the new week is that as long as the pair is below this 138.30 level I'm going to be favoring a push back down towards the 136.40 level in the shorter term now the way the cross is moving so slowly in the pip ranges right now it may take longer than you think, but you never know. Things could volatility could pick up, and we could get some uh, spikes down, just just like we had here last November. So the key is this zone here, the 138.30, 139.00 level. But more importantly, I just want to stick right at this 138, hoping that if we stay below that, or basically the lows of yes, the highs of yes, uh, of uh, Thursday, that we could see a continued push lower in this pair. Now, what if we don't get that? What if we get a break back up higher, back above this line? Then all bets are off. We could still be judged just drift back higher towards the 140 level and, uh, and, and it would be great if you're long the cross but at the same time that would also be a continuation of the slow grinding trading which will make it difficult at best to uh, to uh, capture quite a few pips now the USD Swiss franc same exact thing I've been saying I was saying all week we get above 88 then I'm gonna favor a long boom we popped above 88 but look we stopped right here at this ascending trend line so the opportunity to go long is right here above 88 but I'm gonna prefer to wait for a break of this trend line uh, trend line and then looking for a push higher we would need to see actually a break of this 89 level to confirm the end of this downward trend but it's also definitely worth I would think a uh, opportunity to go long here just looking for looking for a um, with your stops below 88 looking for a continued push higher now if we break back down below 88 then we're going to be back in this ping pong range and it's really hard to say which direction we could get could get in this get which direction could become chief in this area but if we get below 88 it does favor to continue to push back down lower um, I would tell you also these charts the, uh, all these charts are available on the blog you can see exactly what I have here um, the Great Britain USD this one is a little bit uh, more interesting because oh my god this pair had fallen made me fall asleep uh, since February 12th we had just been in this range between 168.20 165 and now it's even the extremes of the range it had been in a very very narrow 200 pip range and bam we broke below 165.70 but we haven't had a measured response to that and that has been the case we can break ranges but we're not getting momentum in one direction or the other and this is limiting the price action but as long as the pair is below this 156.65.70 it does favor continue to push lower what I would look for would be almost like a push back up and a test of it and then look for a push back down and this would be the immediate target the 163 162.50 level if we break back above this level then uh, we'll be cooking with baking but what we'll have to watch here is jump onto the four hour chart we can probably definitely see a trend line here and that's what that's the level that I will be watching uh, if we get back above we can see bam there's the trend now let's throw that onto the uh, throw that onto the daily chart and you can see that uh, any break any uh, any pushback higher break of the one, one break of this 165.70 level then if we get a coincide break of that 166.31 so you basically you can say there's a resistance zone right there uh, if we get that we're right back in this range and you can look for the top and bottom I don't know it's going to be it's going to be a chop fest it'll be very difficult to trade so I'd be looking for a pushback up to the 165.70 now the Aussie what is this guy doing you can see that um, the pair is just 
basically sitting around this 191 level. This 191.30, 191, that has become the resistance zone. I'm not going to say you go short there. Short there, I still favor a continued push lower towards the 0.8380 level, but it doesn't seem to want to follow my predictions here. So what I'm going to say is if we get a break above this, then we're off to the races. Could see 194, I mean 0.9450. If we get a hold here, could get down to 86.40. Now if we jump down onto a four hour chart, what do we have? And I bet it looks a lot like a triangle. And uh, well, it's not so much a triangle as a wedge. We can see, uh, I mean, this is very basic at best, but you can see that we have the top of 191.40, and then we have this ascending trend line here, right around 90. We need a break of this in one, one direction or the other before I'd have any conviction going either way in this cross. And until that happens, then we could just be stuck in this slow grinding. Um, grinding trade price action and uh, so grinding price action so the 9135 level and the 90 level the levels I'm going to watch to see if we get a break one way or the other now New Zealand USD this is an interesting one because let's just draw some more lines on here that are a little bit more a little bit more um, detailed let's go to a weekly chart <laughs> it's funny because I, I know this in details because I just did this this morning but I am a master of not saving my work. Uh, look at this weekly chart here and you can see that, let's get this out of the way, that, oh wait, what are they, hey, it looks like we're at a trend line. And let's see, boom, we want, we test the top here, didn't break it, couldn't get the Momo to go above it. So then let's go to a, the daily chart and you can see that the pair want, tested that weekly, well how far back did that weekly go? It tested that weekly line that goes all the way back I think to 2008 if I'm correct, uh, 2011. So you can see that we had a test of that, now we're getting a rejection and well let's take a four hour chart and go back 30 days last month and you can see that this pair has just been going higher. And right now, right here we are at the range. So what do we do here? Go back to the daily. Right here we have a wedge and this thing is going to break one way or the other. We get a break below this wedge, then we have a nice play to the downside. We get a confirmed break to the top here, we have a nice play to the top. And uh, this is gonna this is gonna break out easily for us, and it's gonna it's gonna tell us what we want and what we should do, and that's what I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on and uh, going into next week because it looks like we're gonna get our break either way. If I had a guess, I'm gonna guess that it's gonna hold there, and we're gonna break back below this and get a test down towards that 84.30 bounce, then further down, um, further down. But I mean, like I said, if I had to guess, that is surely a guess, and you can see that is uh, I'm not gonna make any bets on that. Um, uh, I want to see, I want some confirmation, I want to break break lower, break higher, and then we'll see what goes on. Uh, the Aussie, on oh, a similar boat, we have the, you know, the narrowing wedge. Uh, the USDJPY, this thing has been um, consolidating very, very tightly over the last, let's see where we go back to there, <laughs> January 24th, we can see we're between 101 103.50. It's been going on for so long I'm tired of talking about it, tell you the truth. If we look, we can see that there is a channel going lower here. Bam. But, uh, tell you the truth, it's actually already broken above that. Um, nothing really to say about this pair until we get a break of this 101, 101.3, or 101, 101.50, 103, 103.50. There's really nothing to do. Uh, I mean, you're sure. There's plenty to do. What am I talking about? Uh, you can look, just play the extremes of the range, looking for bounces in either directions, and, you know, play it that way. And um, I favor a break higher, as long as we remain above 101, which is the 50 fibs from this larger move, and I expect to see a push all the way up to 108. But until we get a break in either side, I'm not, you know, what can, you know, I, there's, uh, you can play ranges, and that's what you can do. That's about it. The Aussie New Zealand, this pair is just uh, slowly drifting lower. What I'm looking for here is a break of 105. If we get that, we have a continued push lower. Uh, right now, a nice move higher in this cross, and um, this could be the beginning of a trend higher. And you can see that the pair, though, is probably sitting right there, trend line. Yeah. Um, let's go to a pair I normally trade. That, that chart was just actually up there. 
Uh, this is the cross I normally look at is the Great Britain JPY. This pair aggravating this week. Uh, you can see we had the false break higher, reversal. Actually, I guess that was last week. But you can see this week just basically sat right here uh, doing nothing. And I normally look at this pair on a four hour chart trying to do a jump into what I call stacker trades. And there's nothing. There's a range right here. We need to see a break of this range, but basically 107 or 167. Yeah, let's give me your exact number before just uh, 167.75. Until we get that, this uh, this pair is dead dead money at the moment. Great Britain Oz. Now this pair I do like, and uh, what I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking that if we get a break of this zone, this pair is off to the races. And if we get that, we'll look on a weekly, you can see that we could see a move down towards the uh, 175 level. Uh, at least if we can get a break of this 180, uh, break of this 181, 181, uh, 180 level, then we can see that push lower. If we look at the weekly on the uh, Great Britain JPY, same thing as if we do manage to push back below last week's low, which we can't so far, let's just say at 168, then we could see a move all the way down to 163. All right, that's it. All these charts are on the blog. I hope everybody has a great weekend and um, sign up today. You get access to the Keen feed, Keen charts, and you gotta show you how to do a stacker trades and the Euro trades. Have one trade active. Uh, that's it. Uh, stacker trade going short in the, short in the Euro USD. Uh, at the moment, and hopefully you can move more into that. I can give you a lot more details on that if you uh, on the uh, Keen feed and uh, watching setups in the Great Britain uh, and Great Britain JPY. All right, everybody, have a good weekend. See you soon.